welcome to another interesting session of game making. So tell me, how are you? Is everything running well? Yes, that sounds good. So in this class, you guys are going to study something which is really, really interesting. And do you want to know what it is? Yes, I'll tell you. So in this class, you are going to study how to make the control between a ball and a paddle. Yes, you heard it right. So, can we begin? Yes. So, in this class, as I had already mentioned, you will be studying how to make a control between a ball and a paddle in ping pong AI game. And from here, you will be studying coding concepts like what is a variables, what is operators, what is if then block, what is sensing block, what is key press block, and not only that, you will explore what is sound block from this class. So, it's your time. Tell me now, have you been to this topics ever before? No? Is it entirely the first time that you are on such a topic? Okay, no problem at all. We will explore it together in this class. So are you guys ready for that? Yes? So come, let's get into that. Yes. So well, in the last class, we had done up to here, right? Yes, and do you remember what was that? Yes, we were on our step to make a ping pong AI game, right? Yes, as a starting in the first class, we learned how to make the control between, we learned how to make a ball move, right? Yes, and not only movement, we learned how to make that ball bounce once it reaches the edges. Yes, yes, well, you remember that good. So, in this class, as I had already mentioned, you will be studying how to make that control, right? Yes, you will learn how to make that control between the ball and the paddle, okay? So, for that, what we have to do is what we will be learning in this class, okay? Yes, well, it got interesting now, right? This game is all about winning once you get the maximum number of touches with the paddle in a limited time period, right? Yes, so for that, we have to give the condition like what happens once it touches the paddle, right? Yes. Here comes the use of the control block. From the control block, there is a set of blocks called as if-then block, okay? Yes. And the purpose of this if-then block is to add conditions to the game, okay? Yes. If-then block means they will act only if certain conditions. That is, if-then block means if certain conditions are being met, then the blocks inside it will be getting executed, okay? If the condition is not being satisfied, it won't execute the blocks which are inside it. And here, what is the condition? Yes, here, the condition is a check between the ball and the paddle contact, right? Yes, so here, we have to give it like this. Yes, there is a touching between the ball and the paddle. And here comes the set of blocks and attack craft which is called as the sensing block. Have you heard of these blocks before? No? Well, I'll tell you. The purpose, okay? The purpose of the sensing block is to detect the things, okay? Yes. So, there is a set of blocks inside the sensing blocks like touching. And from there, you have to drop it down and select paddle. That is, now it checks the condition if the ball touches the paddle. And once the ball is being touched by the paddle, then the blocks inside it will be getting executed, okay? And inside it, you have to give the condition, okay? Just think. So once you're touching the paddle, you are al you are almost winning the game, right? Yes, so now we have to check what happens once the ball touches the paddle. Yes, here, the way we can win the game is by making maximum contact between the ball and the paddle, right? Such a way that it does not touch the line. Am I right? Yes, so here comes a set of blocks to give sound effects to your stage and the sprite and that is sound block. Yes, the purpose of the sound block is to add sound effects to your stage and the sprite, okay? And from there, let's give start sound pop. So whenever the ball touches the paddle, it will make a pop sound. Well, it's your time now, please to add these blocks to the algorithm part. Have you done it? Good. See now, if the ball touches the paddle, yes, it made a pop sound. And then the ball had to be aligned in the direction, right, to start again. Yes, so tell me which is the block that I had to go for. Yes, as it is related to movement, you will always have to go to the motion block, right? 
Yes, so from the motion block, choose the option point in direction. And here it is given 90, right? Yes, but it's not 90. Let the ball be aligned in a random position. That is, a random position from the values that we give, okay? And we have a set of blocks to help us out and that's called as the operators. Have you heard of it before? Yes, operators is that green color blocks which is used to compare between the variables and the value, okay? From the operators, I'm going to choose pick random. Yes, so here that will pick a random value from the values that we assigned, okay? And here I'm going to give the values like 45 to minus 45. Yes, it's your time now. Please do it. Have you done it? Yes, so can you check it out? Well, I had already told you that touching the ball and the paddle within a limited number of time period will make you win the game, right? Yes, but how we know that we win in a game? Yes, by analyzing the score, right? But have we added any scoreboard to it? No, we haven't added any scoreboard. Well, it's time now. Can you see a set of blocks called as variables? And click onto that and select the option make a variable, okay? Yes. And from there, select the option of score and then give OK. You see that scoreboard appears. Yes. So for that, click on set my variable to zero and then change my variable to score. Yes. So here, initially you had set the score to zero. Are you guys ready with it now? Yes. And once you're touching the paddle, your score had to be changed, right? Yes, so again give the option or change score by 1, okay? Yes, it's your time now. Please do till here all of you. Have you done it? Good. So here we had set the condition like what happens once the ball touches the paddle, right? But we haven't considered our line here. Actually, we win the game once we touch the paddle. But once we touch the line, we are losing the game, right? Yes, but we are adding a set of lifelines to it. So can be caught now. See, now we are given the condition like what happens once the ball touches the paddle, right? But we haven't yet given like what happens once if the ball touches the line. Yes, there is another condition like that even, right? Yes, so what will be happening once it touches the line? Yes, your score will be reduced but we are adding a set of lifelines to it okay so it can be called accordingly now are you guys ready yes so if you want to start an event in edacraft which is the block that you will have to go for yes you'll go to the event block right and choose from there when green flag clicked yes so please do it all of you it's your time have you done it well, good. So here we are going to add another variable which is called as lifeline, okay? And we have three lifelines in this game. So click on the variable block all of you and choose from there make a variable and give the option lifeline. Okay, yes and give okay. Can you see that? The lifeline board also appears. Have you seen that? Good. And here... We have to set the lifeline, okay? We have to set initially the lifeline to zero. It's your time now. So for that, all of you, please go to the variable block, choose the first option, which is set lifeline and make that lifeline to three. Yes, we have here three lifelines. It's your time, please do it, all of you. Yes, so now whatever happens, let it happen continuously. There is a set of blocks for that and do you remember what it is? Yes, there is a set of blocks inside control blocks called as forever block which is used to repeat an action continuously again and again with zero end. So from the control block, all of you, please choose now the forever loop and drag and drop it inside the algorithm part. It's your time, just do it all of you. Have you done it? Good. So now it's time to give the condition. The condition is like what happens once it touches the line okay so for that we have to go to our conditional block which is if then and give the condition of touching yes something related to detection and we will go for the sensing block yes so from the sensing block choose the option 
touching the line yes so what happens once you touch the line yes you're losing yes we have to give an a sound accordingly right yes your lifelines will be getting decreased right yes so go to the variable blocks again and use the option change lifeline yes i'm saying this here is okay each time he touches the line your lifelines will be getting decreased by one okay so change this number to minus one yes have you done it once you touch the line it's like you're losing the game right so you will have to give a sound accordingly so from the sound effects Start a sound, but not pop. Give a boing sound for that. Yes, it's your time. Please go to the sound block and add the sound effects to your sprite. Have you done it? Good. And here also, after being touching the line, the ball had to be aligned in a particular direction, right? Yes, something related to movement. So, which means you will have to go to the motion block for that. And from the motion block, choose the option point in direction which direction yes so here also let it choose a random value from the values that we provide okay so please go to the operator block and choose from there pick random and change it to let it be minus 45 to 45 now have you done it yes so do you want to see how it works yes so see what happens in the presentation view once i click the green flag Boing. You see that each time when it touches the line, the lifeline gets decreased by one, right? And once Boing. it touches the paddle, the score is getting Boing. increased, right? Yes. Boing. But have you noticed there's something? Each time when the ball touches the paddle, your score was getting increased, and each time when the ball touches the line, your lifeline was getting decreased. But we haven't added any movement for the paddle, right? Yes, so now it's time to code for our paddle. So if we please click on the paddle. Yes, have you clicked on to it? Yes, make sure that the icon of the paddle appears in the algorithm part. Are you guys ready with it? So here we are going to code for the paddle, okay? And each time when we want to begin an event or run a code, we have to go to the event block, right? Yes, so if we please go to the event block and choose from there when green flag clicked. Yes, it's your time. Let's do it all of you. Yes, so they will act as a starters in a program to execute the blocks under it. That is, once they get triggered, they will execute the blocks under it, right? Yes, and here, yes, have you done it? Good. So here also, we have to make the movement for the paddle in a horizontal way. That is, using our arrow keys, we have to control the paddle and make it move, okay? And this action has to be repeated again and again till the end of the game so for that which is the block that i had to go for yes you said it right from the control block there is a loop called forever loop which is used to repeat an action continuously again and again with zero end right yes so now it's your time to please go to the control block and choose from there forever loop have you taken it Good. So now, as I had already told, you are going to control the paddle with your arrow keys, okay? Available in your keyboard. Yes, and here it is again a set of conditions, right? Yes, yeah, so here again it is an if then condition, right? Yes, so here, or if you please go to the control block and choose from there, if then, okay? So if you press the right arrow, let the paddle move by a step of 10 to the right side, okay? And how will you do it? By which block? Yes, there is a set of blocks called as keep press block available in the sensing block. Okay, yes, so drag and drop it and choose from there the right arrow. Okay, yes, so once the right arrow is being pressed, it has to move. Yes, something related to motion, right? Yes, and the purpose of the keep press block is that they run the card if certain keys are being pressed. Okay, and here I choose right arrow as the key. Okay, and then once you choose the right arrow, it will have to make a movement and let that movement be by 10 steps, okay? So once you press the right arrow, let the paddle move by a step of 10, okay? Yes, please do it all of you. Have you done it? Good, okay? So now it's time to give the next condition. So for that, again, please go to the control block and choose from there the next if then. And this time, the condition is like what happens, that is, of course, you know that we are making 
horizontal moment for the paddle, right? Yes. So here the condition is like what happens once we press the left arrow, okay? So go to the control block and choose from there. Key left arrow pressed, okay? So if you please go to the sensing block and choose from there. Key left arrow being pressed, okay? Yes, it's your time. Please do it all of you. And once you press this left arrow, ball had to be moved by a step of negative 10, right? Yes, so please go to the motion block and choose from there. Move minus 10 steps. Yes, it's your time. Please do it all of you. Have you done it? Yes, have you done till here? So now you are all set ready with the card. So which means now it's time to play the game, right? Yes, so if you please click on the presentation view now. Click on the green flag. And see, each time when the ball touches on the paddle, your score is getting increased. And see what happens once it touches the line. Yes, your lifeline is getting decreased, right? Yes, it's your time. Just play it out now. Have you played it? Good. So, this means now we are also set ready with the game. That means now it's time to recap what are the lessons that we have learned in this class, right? Yes, so tell me, what are the lessons that we have learned in this class? Yes, so in this class, in the starting, we learned how to make the ball and the paddle interact, right? And here, we learned a set of blocks like sensing block and the purpose of the sensing block was to detect the things, right? So here, we learned how to check the detection between a line and the paddle, right? So here, in the beginning of the session, we learned how to make the interaction between the ball and the paddle, right? Yes, and we learned a set of blocks like sensing block and the purpose of the sensing block was to sense or detect the things like its name is being indicated, right? Yes, and we learned how to sense between the line and the paddle, right? Yes, and after that we learned about sound block. The purpose of the sound block was to add sound effects to your game, right? Yes, and not only that, we learned about variable blocks which was used to add score onto your game. Do you remember that? Yes, so each time, once the ball touches the paddle, your score was getting increased. And each time, and after that, we set a lifeline to it. So each time, once the ball touches the line, your lifelines was getting decreased. Do you remember that? Yes, and finally, we learned the chord for the paddle. Yes, and after that, we learned how to make the chord for the paddle. And for that, we choose a set of blocks called key press block. And the purpose of the key press block was to run the chord once a specific key is being pressed, right? Yes, do you remember all this? Then save the game by clicking on the files and then give save to your computer and choose a specific name for this project and then save it up, okay? Have you done it? Good. So let's continue this in another session of game making. So that's all about the session. Thank you all for your participation. Have a nice day. Bye. Take care.